understanding the power of sodium bicarbonate, potassium bicarbonate, magnesium bicarbonate. <clears throat> sodium bicarbonate is baking soda. Happens to be the cheapest medicine in the world, beside the sun. And one of the most, if, if not the most powerful, instant acting medicine that exists. The big problem with sodium bicarbonate is it's too cheap. So pharmaceutical companies, <clears throat> the press, the government, even doctors, most doctors will not talk about baking soda. It's too good to be true. It's literally too good to be true. Why is sodium bicarbonate or baking soda so powerful and instant acting? When you take sodium bicarbonate, you take it straight in water and it hits the stomach acid. Same thing happens to it if you take a glass of sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, and squeeze a lemon. Acid turns bicarbonate into carbon dioxide. And you can see that right in the glass. The bubbles start forming. Why is that so powerful? CO2 is supposed to be, according to Bill Gates, the most intelligent, knowledgeable man on the planet, CO2 is evil. And we need to jump through hoops and destroy civilization and have people freeze to death because CO2 is such a problem. How can such a problem be the perfect medicine? What happens when CO2 hits the, is in the stomach because of the acid or because right from the glass with the lemon? It goes into the bloodstream back in the form of bicarbonate. And in the blood, <clears throat> one of the great secrets to medicine is that in the blood, so bicarbonate, bicarbonate and CO2 are like twin sisters. They turn into each other at the speed of light, almost the speed of light with the help of an enzyme. The problem today in medicine and health is that most people are deficient. They have too little CO2 in the blood. Why is that a problem? Because the more CO2 we have in the blood to a point, the more oxygen gets delivered to the cells. One of the basic reasons <clears throat> that people are deficient in CO2 in the blood is because they're breathing too fast. 70 years ago, the breathing norm, the medical norm for breathing rate was eight breaths a minute. Now they've increased that to 12 or even higher. And the problem with breathing too fast is that it's the faster you breathe, the more CO2 you empty out of the blood. When you get deficient in CO2 in the blood, the blood vessels contract, blood pressure goes up, and the oxygen dissociation curve turn, goes negative, meaning it's more difficult for high oxygen to get on and off hemoglobin or red blood cells. Think about exercise. Why is exercise so healthy? Basic reason is that we produce a lot of CO2. A lot. So the more harder you exercise, the more CO2 you're creating, the faster you have to breathe. So you have to get rid of the excess CO2. Excess. But of course, at the same time, you're building up and creating all the CO2, 
you're getting a lot more oxygen. But when you're watching TV, sitting in front of your computer, eating, sleeping, and you're breathing too fast, you're getting rid of too much CO2. Too much. So, <clears throat> taking bicarbonate, and you have a choice, sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, potassium bicarbonate, and magnesium bicarbonate, they all offer you instant access to more oxygen because when you increase CO2, you increase oxygen. And this is a big problem in general today because people are breathing too fast, driving down oxygen delivery, lousy diets, toxicity. Everybody's exposed to chemical and heavy metal poisons in the air, the water oxidative stress, even from radiation exposure. You get some heavy CAT scans, PET scans, mammograms, live in the wrong place where radiation is higher, background radiation is higher. Radiation is going higher in general because of cosmic, more cosmic rays are touching down on Earth, certainly in the atmosphere, but touching down Earth, going through the Earth, NASA is proposing using hydrogen inhalation, hydrogen gas, because they know that because of increased cosmic rays, because the magnetic the protection from the sun is decreasing because we're in a solar minimum, meaning it's going to get it's getting colder and going to continue to get colder. But they know this cuts down the time astronauts can spend in space. So they're wanting to go to the moon again. They want to go to Mars. But they need something to protect from radiation. Sodium bicarbonate is known to protect the body also from radiation. Now, they won't talk about that because it's too cheap. They don't want something like that becoming known because it could drive down pharmaceutical cells. But, and the reason I wrote my book, and here's a few copies of my book on sodium bicarbonate. I don't have a copy in English, but I have in other languages, I have in Chinese, Chinese, Eastern European. So I'm not even sure how many um, languages have been published into, but my New York publisher is going to send me some copies in, in English. I wrote my book on sodium bicarbonate. The original title was Rich Man's, Poor Man's Treatment for Cancer. And I do promote it. I recommend all cancer patients take all bicarbonate. The most recent research from the Ludwig Cancer Center in the United States shows, talks about that <clears throat> Bicarbonate, when it penetrates into tumors and cancer cells, turns back the circadian rhythm of the cancer cells, which they shut off so they can eat 24 hours a day. Cancer cells love to eat. The circadian rhythm of the cells, normal healthy cells, is like 12 hours on, 12 hours off, 12 hours activity eating, 12 hours rest. When you turn it off, cancer cells can gorge 24-7. Bicarbonate turns the clock back on, beginning the starvation of cancer cells. That's a pretty neat trick. The question is, what diseases can you treat with bicarbonate? And the answer is all. Every human being, when they're sick, including children, will benefit. And the older you get, the more deficient we become in bicarbonate because the pancreas needs to make it, the stomach needs to make it to neutralize hydrochloric acid. The pancreas makes it when the food comes out 
of the stomach. It's acidic, so it needs to be neutralized. And the kidneys need to produce a lot of bicarbonate to keep the blood stable. Our ability to do that declines with age. So the older you are, just as an anti-aging agent, but almost every disease implies a, a, an acidic condition where the body moves into a situation which is low in oxygen and low on cell voltage. pH in physics is a measurement of voltage. Uh, the, the difference between being alkaline and acidic is the difference between oxygen, concentra oxygen concentration in the fluids. The more alkaline, the higher the oxygen level because it's OH, oxygen, hydrogen. As you move further and further into acidic, there's less OH and just H, H plus an ion. The further you move to the acidic, oxygen just gets crushed out. So you have low oxygen conditions and low cell voltage. Of course, our cells are more vulnerable to infection. The weaker they are, the lower their voltage. And of course, pathogens love low oxygen conditions. So today, living in a world where people are breathing too fast, exposed, as everybody who lives in a city, and it doesn't even matter where you live today, we're all exposed to higher levels of toxicity in the air and the water. So bicarbonate is a first line of defense, and it's the least expensive line of defense. I don't think I finished my thought why I wrote my, my sodium bicarbonate book. First, I heard from Dr. Tullio Simoncini talking about being used for cancer. And he used to give IVs of bicarbonate to treat cancer. And he was an oncologist, so they persecuted him for that. But that wasn't enough. But about a month after talking to Tullio, I read that the United States Army rates sodium bicarbonate to treat kidney disease or kidneys that are suffering from uranium tox toxicity and that bicarbonate can help remove uranium toxicity, to toxicity from the kidneys. That's pretty heavy duty information. So for radiation in general, I recommend bicarbonate and hydrogen, a hydrogen inhalation, because hydrogen takes down oxidative stress by neutralizing the worst types of free radicals and turning them to water. If it's good enough for NASA, for the astronauts, it's certainly good enough for us. But there's no, I never recommend do it doing anything in isolation. So a great combination would always be hydrogen inhalation, bicarbonate in one of its three different forms, or all three, and magnesium. And we'll do, a, I'll do a separate talk on magnesium. So if you like this, this presentation, join my YouTube channel, go to drcircus.com to read over a thousand articles that I've published over the last 15 years. I publish twice a week. Join my newsletter, mailing list, and tune in to future videos from Yours truly. Have a great day.